Hi, my name is Eric Knudsen. I'm here today with Fence Genius to talk about how you measure your fence runs to be able to produce your custom contour following fencing off-site and then install later in minimal time after you've built them. Generally, whenever you build panels off-site, it only takes about two to four minutes for a two or three man crew to mark the posts, cut the posts, and install the panels. So it can really increase your speed through the site. Another thing is whenever you're doing it this way, when you're prefabbing off-site, you minimize the amount of time and walking around that you spend on landscaping that's freshly installed, and that can be a real benefit. So let's first talk about the, the measuring process. When you have a site that is just raw dirt, you want to set your settings for your float, we call it, the bottom of your fence, to be pretty liberal. So that you can, let's just say you can set your minimum at one inch if you have a hip. Your desired might be three, or let's just say four inches. And your maximum, let's say it's six or seven then what will happen is your bottom of fence line will transition the ups and downs in the rough ground. And then you've installed your fence, the landscaper can come along behind and install ground cover to match your fence. That's the first way to do it. If you come to a site and you already have it landscaped, then you want to hold closer to that landscaping. You don't have as much need for the, it to float through the terrain. So in, in respect to this landscaped yard, I might want to set my desired at, let's just say two inches, my minimum at one inch, and my max at two and a half inches. So I have very little threshold for it to vary as it goes through here. Now you could also just set it all at, let's just say one and a half. You could say my minimum's one and a half, my maximum's one and a half, and my desired's one and a half. And it will just follow at the one and a half. Now when you're measuring, you may use a variety of tools depending on the circumstance. If you don't have posts in the ground, let's just say you're in a part of the country where you're, you've got soil that's predictable, and you pretty much know that if I want to put a post there, I can put a post there because I have a, a sandy ground or a clay ground and I don't have boulders and, and, and I just happen to be on a job site that doesn't have utilities close by. Then you can mark your post locations using the IOS app, the LiDAR app, if you want. And then you can use something like a zip level to capture your elevations of each location on the ground. And those elevations are all you need with the dimensions of where you've got your marks. And then you can prefabricate everything off-site, including the posts, and the posts can come to the site already cut to height, and you simply install in a daisy chain. Now here in the Northwest, we cannot do that. We have boulders everywhere. We have utilities all over the place in these kinds of developments. So we have to pre-install the posts. And pre-installed posts are very easy to measure. It takes about a minute per location, 45 seconds to a minute, minute and 15 if you have rotation to them. The general concept is you start by having a level line, a level plane. Each location, each panel location will have a level mark here and there for this location. This location may have a level mark at a different elevation if you're going up or down terrain. Let's just, for, for, for example, with our Fence Genius measuring stick, if I had a level mark right there, I can then just quickly find my level, mark it, that's all it takes. If you had a fence system that was long, 
that didn't have a lot of terrain to it, you could take a laser level and just walk along and mark all the way along and it would be very fast. If you're working your way uphill, that level line might be down here and then this level line might have to be adjusted up. And in the iOS app, you'll put in this dimension that you had to offset it. If you rise it up, it's positive. If it's going down, it's negative. So as far as measuring goes, this is, like I said, a Fence Genius measuring stick. It's got a couple level vials on it. it has two different scales. It has a scale that starts from the bottom and goes to the end. And that's used for measuring from your level line down to the ground or to where you would imagine the lowest part of the fence would be if you had rough terrain. And it has a scale that goes from this stop down and that's for when you're measuring from the top of the post down to the level line. So if I have my level line on here, first thing I do after that is measure as low as possible. So I put one end on, I look at my level vial, I get it level, and I get my dimension. You can measure with a tape measure, of course, but if you're gonna use a tape measure, it's really a good thing if you can get a second person because you want to be able to pull that tape measure tight. Even a little bit of arc will add a sixteenth of an inch to it and it just helps if you get it straight and tight because it's also got to be level which you don't have the benefit of a bubble if you're using a tape measure. You don't measure up high you don't measure where your level mark is. The level mark is a totally different thing than your horizontal distance apart. You always measure down low. If you have any relative rotation to your posts, we have this um, Fence Genius little rotation gizmo. You can find it on our supply store. You put, you, you hook one end of it to this post. You put the other end on that post. Just pull the string across. Now you can take uh, just an angle finder and capture your angle. Now when you're looking at your panel, this is your left, that's your right, you're standing on the rail side of the fence as you're measuring from left to right and you put those angles in and then the software will accommodate all the compound angles. The other thing you need to know that you need to put in is as you start coming into the software the very first time, you put in the post width. It may be three and a half, maybe three and nine sixteenths, maybe three and five eighths, maybe four or four and an eighth. That can get changed later. As long as you know what it is, it's not critical that it's in right up front, but if you end up alternating sides, if you measure from left to right on this side, and then in the design software, you flip some panels to go to the other side on the rails, it needs to know how wide those panels, uh, the, these posts are, because it calculates from here to there. And if there's a rotation, that width matters. So again, each location takes about a minute per panel of invested time to measure and that gives you the ability to produce your panel system 
off-site and furthermore to use the power of the design in the software. Beyond that, whenever we come to install the fence, the software already knows how high your post cutoff is. So you can see it here. I'm showing this actual fence run and I'm showing that you can see that this post right here is actually dictating all the rest of the posts in respect to the smoothing algorithm. This one is just almost too short, but if it was too short, the smoothing algorithm would smooth around it. Now you may want to use the software to measure your system. Let's just say you didn't have posts here. Let's say you came out here and you wanted to measure your lot line. You can use the LiDAR scanner to click on the start point. You can then travel to the end point. Then it has you come back through and as you come back through, it pulls in the elevations of each of those post locations. And if you choose, you can then grab your spray can and walk back through and looking through your augmented reality on your phone or your iPad, you can then go ahead and spray those post locations. Now generally we use white um, in the fence industry. We don't want to use red. Sometimes I use red just because I'm doing a video, just so you can see it better. But you generally always want to use white when you're marking. Always, when you're installing posts, don't use a little torpedo level. Use at least a two foot level and check for plumb. You, you want to check for plumb both directions and you want this face to be square to your string line so that this face is square to the next face. Point is, if you use a little torpedo level, it covers that big of an area. Use a two foot level, it covers a bigger area. If you use a three foot, obviously you become more and more accurate. Anyway, so to recap, you want to think about are you on raw ground? Are you on finished ground? Are you going to measure your locations? Or are you going to measure installed posts? Those are some different things to consider as you're measuring. And you can accommodate any of those in the Fence Genius software. Thank you and happy fence building.